was Epic by Hal Sagan. It's off the brand new EP. I bought it through their pledge thing. It's on the way to me. That was the digital download. So it was definitely a fun take on it. Um, I wanted to play something that no one else is playing by that band. So I appreciate them always working with the show. And I love promoting them. Um, the guitarist is from Palman 5000. So there's a lot of affiliation with the, the show a little bit there. But as you guys know, that was born into exile. So the CD sounds great. Make sure you go pick it up. What you heard um, before that was a fine line. So as you know, I'm Jay Stone. And this is my motherfucking show. And Katsunyama was having a whole bunch of problems. I was going to play um, a replay of one of his older segments. But he was able to get it up to YouTube. For some reason, he's having problems. So hopefully we're going to be able to work this out and get him through it. And uh, I'm going to actually stream it from my iPad. So I have to change up a couple of things during the process. Why I'm doing 20-minute prep time on the phone over to some European radio shows. Some guys asked me to give them a call, but I don't think it's online. I actually think it's it's live on the air. They actually still do live radio, not like the bullshit here. But, um, yeah, so technical problems happen. I mean, it happened to me two weeks ago. It just, it just fucking happens. Um, he probably got some type of virus thing and on his tablet or something and it fucked them all up. So I'm still having breathing problems and shit like that. <laughs> Coughing, working, farting, shit and sneezing. You know, you know how it be going. As long as you don't do them all at the same time, it's not that bad. If you cough, fart, burp and sneeze at the same time, that shit hurts. It's like fucking farting glass or something. It happens. It happens. There's people out there that can verify that. But you got to stick with the fucking Born Into Exile stuff, man. If you like that heavy music, that's definitely the way to go, man. Those guys definitely come a long way over the past couple of months just from first meeting them and stuff. They were always good before that, but, I mean, the CD sounds fucking great. So can't be more proud of those guys. Martyrs Asylum is working on new stuff. Um check those guys out i'm trying to sell some stickers and donate them to different bands and stuff like that but no one seems to be paying any attention to that so that's kind of a bummer there but you know it is what it is not everybody's got seven bucks to lay out on a sticker but it's four dollars to print it a dollar goes to me and two dollars is going to the band so i mean i had to pay for the artwork to be drawn up because i try to spread the stuff out there so if not, it is what it is. I give some stickers away for free. Whatever. Just get the name out there. And, you know, I, I figured people be willing to help bands and stuff and put a little towards this band and that band and, you know, try to spread it out. But people are tight asses. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I don't know what to do anymore. All I know is I'm working fucking seven days a week doing a radio show Trying to fucking manage fucking life, getting written up at fucking stupid work for attendance that I was never talked to about in the first fucking place. You can't write someone up without giving them a verbal warning first. But whatever, the place is a fucking joke and a half. I really don't care. I'm going to play um, Alicia's segment, The News. But she's done it a little different because she's out on the road. So I'm going to play her featured bands before and after. So the first band that she's featuring is a band called Snake Bite Whiskey. And the song is called Comes Around. And then we're going to go into Alicia's segment. She does a little bit of an interview. And then I'm going to play uh, another track by her other featured band, which she'll explain during the segment. I'm Jay Stone. You're listening to my show live from Ta well. Live, dead, whatever the case may be. I'm dead from Tarpon Springs, Florida at rockmetaltalk.com. Come on, Jack, play.
welcome to Rock Metal Talk Radio News on the Jay Stone Show. I'm your host, Alicia, and it's been a killer week. If you have news you'd like me to report or would like to be one of my featured bands, please email me at ams32 at live.com. My bands of the week are Home Wrecker from Lewiston, Idaho, and Snakebite Whiskey from Brisbane, Australia. The band you just heard was Snakebite Whiskey with their song Comes Around, and the members consist of J. Ron on vocals, David Aarons on guitar, Stacy Blake on bass, Nick Dystar on drums, and you can catch them December 9th at Gareth Stock in Greenslope, Queensland, alongside bands like Blizzards of Oz, Asylum, Goatzilla, and Elkinwood. My second band of the week is my good friend's Homewrecker with their song Holding Hands, which will close out our show. The band consists of Kevin Black on vocals, Alexander Black on guitar and vocals, Brett Guile on bass, David Delva on drums. You can catch Homewrecker October 29th at Boomer's Garden in Lewiston, Idaho with Buck Cherry and Sebastian Bach. Both bands can be found on Facebook, so go shoot them some love. I'd also like to take a moment and send our thoughts and prayers to the family of Lenny from Translight Vision. We here at the J. Stone Show send our condolences and love to you. So I am here with my band in Seattle, Washington, and I decided to do something a little different today. Um, I have Seamus and Greg here, and I'm going to interview the guides of Heart of Ale. You guys all hear about me all the time, and I'd, I'd like you to get to know my band members a little bit. So Seamus, Greg, welcome to the J. Stone Show. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me your names and who you are in the band and how you got started in music. Seamus, go ahead. You can start. Alrighty, well, I'm Seamus. I've been playing drums for about, let's see, it'll be about 14 years now. Um, started playing piano when I was nine years old. That's really where it all began. I started getting a real knowledge base for uh, theory and classical training. And as I got older and hit 13, I heard Led Zeppelin for the first time, and that was pretty much the end of the classical theory part of it for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> From there, I started developing my own musical interests and really focusing on the stuff that I found. And funny enough, it all kind of came full circle because it all started getting back into the theory and the classical knowledge. Because once you found that those bands kind of incorporated a lot of those things into their sound, then you, your interest to learn more about that grows. So it's been fun thus far, at least. <clears throat> Good answer. Uh, this is Greg, and I started... Playing music, uh, doing drums in school when I was like 11 years old, and then not exactly sure what made me switch, but um, I picked up a guitar when I was 16, and uh, about a year or two later started writing and recording my own stuff, trying to just piece together um, all the instrumentation myself, and then fast forward probably four more years after that, I started building up the courage to write my own lyrics and singing and recording that about seven, eight years ago met Alicia, and we started collaborating all of our experience and coming up with some new stuff, which is what Heart of Ale is about. All right, Greg, you actually answered one of my questions of how you started Heart of Ale. So Greg and I have been playing together for about eight years. We write the lyrics and melodies. Seamus, let's uh, tell how you joined the band and how long you've been in it. All righty. Um, this one was a little ironic, actually, because um, the band being based out of Spokane and somewhat inherently Coeur d'Alene also, it's a really, really small um, circle of musicians just in that area, and then when you expand a little bit more outward, you you know you hear names like Homewrecker and whatnot out of Lewiston. I'm also on the show this week, um, <laughs> but um, no, this was this was a little interesting because um, I had seen Heart of Vale. Um, I'd heard of them obviously a couple of years back when I was in a couple other bands, but the first time I'd really seen them was at a, a State Line Music Festival earlier this year, 2016, and. Um, Really, at that point, I was so wrapped up in my own projects that I didn't care about joining anything new. But um, at the time, Mother Nature had just um, dumped about a load and a half of rain on our band. Yeah. <laughs> and I really, I, I so much didn't care about doing anything except having a couple cocktails and watching the rest of the bands. And at that point, I was like, all right, just chill, have some fun, whatever. Let's see if there's any standouts here. And um, Heart of Veil came on um, shortly after we were done, saw them, and I, I just started getting wrapped up in it. Like, holy crap, I mean, this isn't this isn't just the next band. I mean, these guys are doing something different than anybody, like, not even just here at this event, but kind of all around town also. And I met all the guys after they were done, and they were really cool. Um, their drummer at the time was uh, a friend of mine, and still, and still is. We still get along and all that good stuff. But um, 
no, we, we basically just fell out of contact for a little while. And then uh, me and Alicia, or you, started talking for a little <laughs> while following. And, um, you know, it was, we just kind of talked as acquaintances. And one day I got the call like, hey, um, would you have an interest in, you know, trying out for this? And I just kind of stopped like, mm, this, is, this is news. I halfway didn't expect that, but let's see what we can do here. <laughs> <laughs> um, had Had a little bit of time to learn everything or try before my tryout. And it ended up working out. And fast forward, I've only actually really been in the band now to answer the last part of that for about a month and a half. So I'm kind of at the point now with it where we're over that initial kind of uh, learning curve and we're really starting to actually gel and hit that next threshold now, if you will. Yeah, awesome. And we're, we're super happy to have Seamus here. Um, so our band just got signed to Milagro Records. It's something that Greg and I had wanted to accomplish years and years ago. What, what would you guys say you'd also like to accomplish with this band? What are some of your goals that you would like to see happen besides, you know, the record deal? I think is, uh, yeah. that's always going to be on short term and long term. Definitely, definitely true. I think I think something awesome to add to that too would be, and this is extremely wishful thinking, but it is a goal also, and I feel like I'm in a band where everybody intends to work to get there, so that makes it even more positive. Um, I mean, really the cool thing would be not only to tour short and long term, but to make a living doing this. Definitely. Like, yeah. I mean, to not have to... I would rather work 70 hours a week or 80 hours a week doing music and enjoying the hell out of myself than you know, answer to the man for 40 a week. I mean, that's really where it's at. Definitely. And where would you guys like to tour? Like, what's when, What's your number one place you'd like to go tour? Yeah. I would I would definitely agree with that. I mean, really, really as far as touring, touring in America, whether you've got support behind you or not, kind of could do it by your own means if you were determined enough. I mean, we just bought a tour bus and you know, we're here in Seattle now due to... Um, 